QuickBooks Desktop 2023, QuickBooks Desktop Options. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We're gonna go to the source here, that being the Intuit website, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, that's at intuit.com, intuit.com. Intuit owns multiple different kinds of software, so typically I then want to go into QuickBooks, that's gonna be up here at the top at this point in time in their website. So now we're on the QuickBooks page within the Intuit owner of QuickBooks website. Now remember, there's two major categories of the software of QuickBooks, online versus desktop. We thought about that major distinction in the past. We're in a desktop course here, so we're focusing in on the options under desktop version at this time. Now, the easiest way to do this for me, I usually go all the way to the bottom, and this has been here and been this same way for some time on the Intuit website, so I would expect that it would be the same way going forward, the QuickBooks website of Intuit. Here are the products. Now again, you can see even at just looking at QuickBooks, you can be a little bit overwhelmed seeing that all the different QuickBooks kind of products here. So first we just wanna think, hey look, am I looking at online version or am I looking at the desktop version? For us, we're on the desktop version. So I'm gonna go into there, already having made the decision in this particular course, it being a desktop course, that we want a desktop version and then looking at the options within the desktop version, noting, that the desktop version, different options, you can think of them as basically more features within the same kind of system. And the online version, the different versions in the online, different versions being different features within the online version. The desktop version versus the online version, on the other hand, are like a difference in kind. They're different kinds of software. You could convert from a desktop version to an online version and possibly vice versa when you need to, but that conversion is a lot more difficult than say adding another, another link or another tier and the price level within the desktop or online version. So here we are on the desktop, basically sales page of QuickBooks that is owned by Intuit. Now remember that as we go through the sales page, there are there is another option as well to getting access to the software if you just want to practice with it, which is a great tool for a course like this, and that would be to try to get a free trial version. So if you go to if you just go to a website, I think it's easier than actually going into the Intuit site to get the free trial version for some reason. Don't ask me why. Go to your favorite browser like Google or whatever and type in QuickBooks desktop free trial. Make sure that you put desktop or else you might get the QuickBooks online free trial. We want to make sure we got the QuickBooks desktop free trial. And typically you might have to search around for it a little bit, but you should have something like this. Here's this one, QuickBooks download desktop 30 day trial. Let's try this one up top. I believe that's it. It's on the quickbooks.intuit website. So that looks correct. It looks like we're on the Intuit website, uh, quickbooks.intuit. And then we've got the download 30 day trial. So we might go into this in a little bit more detail later, but that's one way to get access, which is a great tool for practicing in a course like this. It's a limited access time, but a great tool. Now at this point in time, I think they only still have the 2022 version accessible here. Hopefully they'll update it for the 2023 version uh, shortly. Also note that if you down like the enterprise version, for example, you should still be able to work with everything we're doing here because that's going to have everything we have and then have some more features over and above it. Okay, so we might go back into this just to point that out again in a future presentation, but just keep that in mind. Now we're just looking at the different options on the desktop version specifically on the sales page 
for the desktop. So obviously the free version isn't going to be here because this is their sales page. Now, the interesting thing that they did here is they removed the cheapest version, which is going to be the uh, QuickBooks Pro, which I believe is selling for $549.99. And I actually contacted into it and asked them, why didn't you put that version on the sales page so people can buy the probably the most popular version? And basically they're trying to funnel people to actually talk to an accountant or chat with QuickBooks themselves to make the purchase. And I believe then the chat person is designed to be able to say, is it really the desktop version you want or are you looking for the online version? Now that might be, because they're just trying to make sure that people don't purchase the wrong software. So maybe people oftentimes have been purchasing the desktop version instead of the online version, or it might be that they're trying to funnel people to the online version so that so that uh, possibly they have less people on the on the desktop version. And that's a little bit fearful because you think, well, then does that mean that they're going to try to remove the desktop version in the future or something like that? We talked about that a little bit in the past. It, you would think that would be difficult to do because the desktop version is popular and it has some things that, that are do better on the desktop version than online. I won't get into that again, but I just have to show that here because you could see that with that missing component, which again is the $549.99. And because they're selling the online version here or letting you know about it on the desktop page, which again, is, a, is another indication that either they're just trying to make sure people don't get confused or they're trying to kind of push people towards the online version. But remember the desktop version, especially for a course like this, has a lot of benefits for us, especially the fact that we can have backup files and the fact that we can have multiple company files. Those are huge benefits. Note that it might be the case that they're trying to push the small businesses over to the online version and then the larger businesses that might be utilizing some more advanced features that may still be better on the desktop version, such as related to inventory, having them use the Premier Plus and the Enterprise. And the reason I say that is that you'll note that the smaller businesses are the areas where you could have a situation where one bookkeeper tries to do fairly basic bookkeeping work for a whole bunch of small clients and they could do that with basically just one version of the desktop software which from the Intuit perspective they might see that as costly to them right they would rather be selling multiple versions of the online software to all those small businesses instead of having one bookkeeper do the bookkeeping for a bunch of small businesses and only be paying for the one-time software so maybe they're saying hey let's try to get all those small businesses onto the online software and then we'll still try to be marketing the desktop software for those more advanced users i don't know these are just guesses but in any case they do they do still have the pro version but you've got a contact in chat to to get the pro version and that's the one that we're basically going to be focused in on here in terms of our functionality when we go through the practice problem and then they've got the premiere plus and then the enterprise, which is the only two that you could see on the current page here. We'll try to go through some of the differences they listed below. So the first one, uh, concurrent users. So these are the people that can use it basically at the same time. This is one of the, the big differentiating factors between a smaller business and a larger business is how many people can be logged into and using the software. And then we've got here on the enterprise up to 40 users advanced rules. One of the other things that becomes more and more of an issue as you get your, a larger and larger business is to be able to segregate, separate the different kinds of duties that our people are gonna do within the accounting department. And that's gonna be a huge internal control. For small businesses, if you've got one bookkeeper doing all the bookkeeping, not a big issue. For larger businesses, then you wanna specialize the duties as part of your internal controls. And that's one of the big advantages as you as you go up the price scale track income and expenses that's one of the basic kind of functions of accounting software so we would hope we would have that the invoicing is going to be us basically billing the clients the invoice is something that kind of records that transaction a sale kind of transaction and it also is going to be part of our our receipt cycle for our cash flow cycle so create professional estimates invoices payments invoice for service goods billable time and expenses and so on so we'll talk more about that 
in future presentations. Run reports. So clearly running reports is one of the, again, the primary things we would expect accounting software to do. The, the normal reports being the financial reports, profit and loss or income statement and the balance sheet, those being the main couple reports. As we get more sophisticated, then we might want more customized reports. And that's when, once again, the more advanced software can run more specialized uh, types of reports for businesses, usually larger ones that have special needs. Send estimates. So notice that uh, the estimate is something that we might make in like a job cost type of system that doesn't record a transaction, but basically it's gonna be tied to us getting a job, for example, and, and, and so you could have more complex type of estimates as you get uh, advanced software. Uh, we've got the track sales tax. So sales tax is gonna be something in the United States that's done on a state by state basis. It might be similar to in, in other countries. We have like a usage tax, for example, and uh, QuickBooks is getting better and better at being able to even in different sales tax in different states to set that up. So we will practice that. And basically we'll, we'll be using in essence, the pro version. So manage bills and payables. So the, that's gonna be on the payment side of things. The bill represents in QuickBooks, someone who gives a bill to us, meaning we're gonna have ultimately cash flow going out, tracking the accounts payable related to it. We would expect that we will have that in the the software we'll be using, which is basically, in essence, the pro version, track time. So we'll talk about tracking time. We can use time to basically help with our payroll. We can also use it for our billing purposes in a job cost kind of system. So we'll, we'll see that. And it's basically there generally in a pro version as well. So we'll see that in, in essence, the pro version that we'll be using in our example problem. Track inventory. Now inventory is something that, that uh, can get more tricky as you have more advanced needs for inventory. And you've got to think about, do I want to have inventory tracked in the system? If you're a small business, do you want to have it tracked on a perpetual inventory method in the computer system, which would be tracking it in QuickBooks? Or do you want to have a periodic system that you can be using, uh, which might be a little bit easier? We'll talk more about that. But the inventory, basic inventory is in the pro system as well, which we'll look at. Uh, list items. So we've got the list items, item lists. We'll talk more about as we go through the practice problems. Pay the 1099 contractors. So 1099s in the United States is something, a reporting requirement. So we'll talk more about that in future presentations and some tools to make that a little bit easier. Unlimited customer support. So notice that uh, you have some customer support, but oftentimes if you have bookkeeping question, you might also want to have support from an accountant, for example. So we'll talk in future presentations about the support options that might be best uh, for you in terms of what you're using the support for bookkeeping questions or actual software kind of application kind of questions, data backups. So you've got the backups, uh, forecasting. So you can have different forecasting options. Uh, we'll talk about budgeting and so on a little bit uh, in our practice problem. Industry, industry specific features, industry specific features, track profitability by product or by project. So you got project uh, billing and you can have different reports by, by project. So some of those might be a little bit more advanced and we could get into some specialties with regards to a job cost system. Mobile inventory barcode scanning. Again, this is something when you get into more advanced inventory needs that the software can be useful for and you might have to upgrade for some more advanced inventory. Uh, end to end sales order fulfillment, fully integrated and on service additional fees. So once again, as you get more complex there, that, that's one of the things that could increase the price. Payroll is always gonna be another add-on type of feature. So we'll talk about payroll when we go into it. Uh, and you could purchase payroll through into it that could help you to process payroll, or you might think about a third-party payroll. We'll talk about more that more shortly when we get into the practice problem. QuickBooks Enterprise with cloud uh, access could be an add-on which could help you basically have cloud access to the, in essence, enterprise or basically the desktop kind of future. So some of the major things, if you're a smaller business, you're probably still looking at the pro series, which again, if you're doing this just for a practice problem, you could use the free 30 day uh, test, test file, which hopefully will be updated to 2022 shortly. And some of the things that will force people from a small business 
to need to level up to a premier, for example, are usually going to be things like you're just getting larger and you need more, uh, more users, more separation of duties within the accounting system. And oftentimes the inventory tracking is one of the other big ones that, that, fo that force people to move up. Not that there isn't inventory tracking in the pro, we will do inventory tracking, but you have more advanced inventory, the barcoding kind of stuff when you have more complex inventory needs and then just specialized uh, kind of needs for specific areas such as more specialized job costing and more specialized kind of report needs. Th those are the reasons why you would typically need to be leveling up possibly from the pro, which we're gonna use, which it's not showing here to like a premier or enterprise.